Okay, so the video I just did for you guys in class didn't work because the sound wasn't working. So I'm just going to go through these examples again. So we're going to actually use the addition formula here. And it says using a suitable angle formula, show that uh, sine of 15 is equal to root 6 minus root 2 over 4. Well, there are certain angles that we know about for sine, cos, tan. They are 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. So we're going to use some combos of those to come up with 15. And the combo that is the same as sine of 15 is sine of 45 minus 30. And to this, I'm going to apply the addition, uh, the addition formula. So that would be sine 45 cos 30 minus cos 45 sine 30. And obviously, these could be switched around. It doesn't matter about the order. Now, sine 45, you should know, is 1 over root 2. And cos 30 is root 3 over 2. Cos 45 is minus 1 over root 2. And sine 30 is a half. So we have root 3 over 2 root 2 from those bits, minus 1 over 2 root 2. Combining these fractions together, that is root 3 minus 1 over 2 root 2. You can either put this in your calculator, or you could rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and bottom by root 2. When you do that, you get root 6 minus root 2 over 4, which is what the question was looking for. So in this case, we knew lots of things about 30 degrees and 45 degrees, and we used that information to be able to come up with what sign of 15 degrees is here. I'm going to try another question. This time, we have been told about the angles. It says, given that sine A is minus 3 fifths, and A is between 180 and 270, and that cos of B equals minus 12 thirteenths, it should also say, and B is obtuse. There's a typing error there. It should say that B is obtuse. Find the value of cos of A minus B, and then the tan of A plus B. Well. To start with, I'm going to try and say what cos of A minus B is using the addition formula, which is going to be cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. Now, the question has told me what sine A is, and it's told me what cos B is. So I need to find out what cos A and sine B are. Now, in order to do this, I already know that sine A is equal to minus 3 fifths. And I also know how to find out what cos A is, because cos squared A is going to be, that's for me finding this one here, cos squared A is 1 minus sine squared A. So that's going to be 1 minus this thing squared, which is going to be 9 over 25. And 1 minus 9 over 25 is 16 over 25. So that's what cos squared A is equal to. Now, when I square root this to find out what cos A is, I'm either going to have 4 over 5, which is the square root of this, or minus 4 over 5. But they told us something. They told us that A was in between 180 and 270. When I think of my diagram I have here, this is 180, this is 270. It's going to be in this area. For the cast diagram, if it is in this area, the only thing which is positive is tan which means that the cosine would not be positive, and instead, cosine A is minus 4 fifths. So now I know what this thing here is, so I'm going to tick that one off. But I need to find out what sine B is that I have here. Well, I know that cos B is minus 12 over 13, and similarly, I know that sine squared B is 1 minus cos squared B. So that's going to be 1 minus this thing squared, which is 144 over 169, or 25 over 169. That is what sine squared b is equal to. So when I square root this, I'm going to have that sine b is equal to either the square root of this is 5 over 13, or minus 5 over 13. So we're going to go back to the question where it told me that B is obtuse. Now, obtuse angles are going to be in this section, because the angle is being measured around like this. 
between 90 and 180. Now when we write for our cast diagram, this tells me that sine is positive in that quadrant, meaning it can't be the negative one, so instead sine B is this. So I'm just going to circle all the ones I need. That's what sine A is, that's what cos A is, this is what cos B is, and this is what sine B is. So I'm now going to come back across here, and I'm literally just going to sub everything in, because I now know all four of those things. So cos A is minus four-fifths, cos B is minus 12 thirteenths. Sine A is minus 3 fifths. And sine B is 5 thirteenths. So here, I have a negative times a negative, which is going to be a positive 48 over 65, 5 times 13. And then I'm going to have minus 15 over 5 times 13, which is also 65. So 48 take away 15 is going to be 33. So it is 33 over 65. That is what the cos of A minus B is. OK. Now part B of the question wants us to find the tan of A plus B. Now we know that the tan of A plus B from our addition formula is tan A plus tan B divided by 1 minus tan A, tan B. And so I need to find out what tan A and tan B are. Well, if I come back over to here in this section, I know that tan A is going to be sine A divided by cos A. So that's minus 3 fifths divided by minus 4 fifths. You can cancel the negatives and the over, the over 5, and you just get 3 over 4. Now, 3 quarters makes sense that it's positive, because we said that tan was positive when the angle is between 180 and 270. So I'm also going to now work out what tan B is. And tan B is sine B over cos B, so it's going to be 5 over 13, all divided by cos B, which is minus 12 over 13, which simplifies to minus 5 over 12. And it's good that this is negative, because we said that only sine was positive for obtuse angles. So it makes sense that tan is going to be negative. So this is tan A, and this is tan B. Careful that it's negative. So I'm just going to sub them straight in. Tan A is 3 quarters, so that's 3 quarters. Tan B is minus 5 twelfths. And that's going to be 1 minus 3 quarters multiplied by minus 5 twelfths. So that's... 3 quarters minus 5 twelfths, that's a third. And then we've got 1 minus 3 quarters times negative 5 twelfths, which is 21 over 16. And then I'm going to just calculate that. And that is 16 over 63 for that one that we've got there. OK, I'm just going to put a line in here to show those are separate kinds of calculations. So it's really putting together all the sorts of things that we know in trigonometry so far. It's quite demanding, um, but it's just putting all those ideas together. OK, so you can have a go at doing these ones without a calculator. Obviously, I'm going to just go through these myself, though. So you can pause the video here and have a go. So we know our key angles are 30, 45, 60, and 90. If I want to calculate 75, I can do the 30 and the 45. So the cos of 75 is the same as the cos of 30 plus 45, which is, using the addition formula, cos 30, cos 45, minus sine 30, sine 45. Now cos 30 is root 3 over 2, and cos 45 is 1 over root 2. Sine 30 is a half, and sine 45 is 1 over root 2. So this is root 3 over 2 root 2 minus 1 over 2 root 2, which is root 3 minus 1 over 2 root 2. Now you can either put that in your calculator. I know it says without using a calculator, but it's fine because you're showing you're working. If you multiply the top and bottom by root 2, you get root 6 minus root 2 over 4. And then the next one is going to be for tan of 75. 
and we know that tan of 75 is the same as tan of 30 plus 45. So that is going to be tan 30 plus tan 45 divided by 1 minus tan 30, tan 45 from the formula. Tan 30 is going to be root 3 over 3, or 1 over root 3. Tan 45 is 1. And then you're going to have 1 minus root 3 over 3 multiplied by 1. I'm just going to put that all in the calculator and see what it simplifies to. And when you put that all in the calculator, you get 2 plus root 3. Okay, so that all simplifies to 2 plus root 3. I'm just going to write that a bit more neatly. Even though it says don't use a calculator, what it really means is don't just type tan 75. Once you've got down to this stage here, obviously we can simplify that quickly using our calculator. So the questions that you guys can have a go at... Well, actually, I think we do one more example here. There's a challenging question at the end before we do exercise 7b. This is really for people that I think are aiming for A's or A stars. So it says, given that this is true, show without a calculator that this is true. Well, it looks like I'm going to do the addition formula here. So I'm going to start applying the addition formula to this. So that would be 2 cos x cos 50. And then it's a negative, 2 sine x sine 50. Then I'm going to do the right-hand side. That would be a sine x cos 40 plus a cos x sine 40. Now, there's a couple of things to notice here. The question has got tans, it has x, and it has 40. Well, I know how to create a tan x. I divide by cos x. And I know how to create a tan 40. I divide by cos 40. But there is a bit of an issue in the sense that this side of the equation has 50s. You should know an identity called the co-function identity. And the co-function identity says this, that sine of x is the same as cos of 90 minus x. That's why the co is actually added in front of co cosine. And similarly, cos x is equal to sine of 90 minus x. So you could see here, if I said, what is sine 40 the same as? If x was 40, well, 90 minus 40 is 50, so it's the same as cos 50. And similarly, cos 40 is the same as sine 50. So what this means I can do is I can translate these 50s in fact, these cos 50s and sine 50s, I can change them so that they are 40s. This means that the cos 50 would change to a sine 40. Look what I've got over here. And that the sine 50 is the same as cos 40. And now I'm at a stage where I can create the tans. So to create the tans, I'm going to divide by cos x, and I'm going to divide by cos 40. And I'm going to spot and see what happens. So some of these things are going to cancel. The cos x here will cancel. The cos 40 here will cancel. The cos 40 here will cancel, and the cos x here will cancel. So this leaves me with a 2 tan 40 minus 2 tan x being equal to tan x, sin x over cos x, plus tan 40. Rearranging this by adding the 2 tan x to this side, I would get 3 tan x. And then on this side, I have 2 tan 40 minus tan 40, which is just tan 40. And then dividing both sides by 3, I get a third tan 40 equals tan x, which is the thing that the question wanted me to show. So you can now do the exercise 7b. You can do questions 4 to 10 with these kinds of skills. But really, these don't pop up very much in the exam. So my class didn't spend very much time on these. And we moved on to the next bit with the double angle formulae. Okay.